So recently I uploaded a video called Astrophotography Made Easy where I briefly covered the planning, shooting and editing of Milky Way or astrophotography. For the most part the video was very well received, especially on my Instagram reel where at this moment in time it has had over 2 million views. Though, one of the comments I would get from time to time was that I could only get good results because I have a good camera. This video right here is to prove them wrong and to show people you don't always need the craziest gear to get decent results. So tonight I'm going to be doing some astrophotography using one of the cheapest brand new cameras available which is the Canon 1500D. I'll even be using the kit lens which is the 18 to 55mm f3.5 to 5.6. So with this specific camera and lens combination, we're going to have to make some compromises because the lens only opens up to f3.5. Uh, so there's two ways of going about this. One of them is we can lift our ISO up higher, which I'd probably like to avoid uh, because I imagine it's going to be quite noisy as it is. And the second option is to extend our shutter speed even longer, which is probably what I'm going to do. Normally I use what's called the NPF rule, and that gives you a good shutter speed so you don't get trailing in your stars. Um, you can also use the 500 rule, but the MPF rule is much more accurate for modern cameras, especially with high megapixel counts. So I'm going to extend the shutter speed on this to 25 seconds. There might be some trailing in the stars, but that's just a compromise we have to make when we're using a lens that doesn't open that wide. So my current settings for this are going to be ISO 3200 at 25 seconds and f3.5 which again is wide open for this particular lens. Now that my settings are dialed in, I'm going to focus on the stars. I'm going to do this by switching the lens over to manual focus. Then I'll put the camera on live view where I can digitally zoom into some stars and adjust my focus until the stars are the smallest point possible. In order to get the best results possible, I'm going to be stacking my images. This is when you take a certain amount of images, around 20 to 30 is good, and then you take another 20 or so with the lens cap on. This will help to remove a lot of the higher ISO noise from the image, but also allow us to extract more detail out of the Milky Way. So if you have an intervalometer, it's definitely going to come in handy here. You can plug it in and you can tell it to take as many photos as you like. And as I said, I'm going to take 30 to 40 photos. Some cameras have intervalometers built in. Some of them you have to use externally like a remote. For some cameras, I'm not sure if this, it exists for this, but you can actually use a phone app as well. Uh, this camera doesn't have an intervalometer built in and I don't have one for this camera because I wanted to shoot absolute bare bones with just cheap equipment, including the tripod. But what this camera can do though, it has a feature where it can shoot 10 photos one after the other. So I'm gonna do that and once that finishes, I'll press it again and I'll just do that until it's taken the 40 images. So I'll have to do that three or four times if I want 30 or 40 images. And then what we're gonna do is put the lens cap on and do the same thing and probably take about 20 images for that. If you don't have an intervalometer or anything like that you can set on your camera, you may just have to sit here and press the shutter uh, every time the exposure's finished, but it's not the end of the world, it just might take you a while, but yeah, if you have a feature like that or you have an intervalometer, it's definitely helpful. So I've just finished taking my photos, so let's get these into some free software called Sequator, where we're gonna stack our light images, which is with the lens cap off, and then we're gonna stack them with our dark frames, which is with the lens cap on, which will help to remove some noise and bring out some more detail in the Milky Way and the stars. So let's do that now. I'm now going to stack my images in Sequator by loading in my normal frames along with the dark frames we took with the lens cap on. Sequator will help to keep the foreground still and stack the stars. Once Sequator has finished, it will give me a file that I can then load into Photoshop and start editing. I'm not going to cover the whole editing process as it is quite detailed and it is something I teach in my photography course. So if you're interested in learning more about photography, all the way from the basics to the more advanced techniques such as this, check out my photography course, the link will be in the description. And this right here is the final image. Alright so that is it, I hope you enjoyed, we were able to get some pretty good results, were they perfect? Definitely not, but for a really cheap camera that's only around 600 Australian dollars with a kit lens, I think it came out pretty good. So the main letdown was probably with the lens, being 18 millimeters in full frame equivalent, it's around 24 millimeters. So the longer your focal length is, the shorter your shutter speed needs to be to stop the stars from trailing. So there was that limitation, but also the limitation of only being able to open up as wide as 3.5. If we had a faster lens, maybe a 2.8, 1.8, F2, something like that, the results would have been drastically better. 
but I was pretty amazed at how much detail I was able to pull out of the raw file. So in the actual raw file, the Milky Way was actually quite faint. It was really hard to see. So I was pretty surprised I was able to pull out all that detail out. Yes, I got a bit of noise, but with a little bit of noise reduction, it came out pretty good. So this video is just for people who might have a cheaper budget or they already have a camera and they wanna know if they can do Astro with limited lenses and limited bodies and things like that. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy this one. It was heaps of fun to do. I enjoy doing things like that. It's a bit of a challenge. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.